I'm Chris with Everyman Overland. I'm here today to introduce you to my newest fridge, the Set Power AB16. A couple of weeks ago, Set Power reached out to me and said, hey, we've got this new fridge we're coming out with and we're pretty excited about it for a few different reasons. Uh, the form factor is great and you can fit it down. Like if you're in some kind of like a small SUV or a minivan, you can fit it down in between the front seats. I've actually seen this referred to as a armrest cooler a couple of times in some of the literature that I've seen. So I said, yeah, absolutely. Send it on down my way. I'd love to take a look at it and see how it goes. My initial impression when I was thinking about, well, I've got a, another set power VL45D, which is a 45, I don't know, it's 45 quart, 45 liter. I can never remember which one it is, but it's a 45, right? All the numbering stays the same. I've got a 45 and then I actually have a big guy. I've got like a 63 sitting over there as well for if we're really taking long trips. So I thought, what, you know, what am I gonna do with a 16? What, it's, it's too small, what, I, I, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. But then I started thinking about all the different possibilities and all the different ways it could be used and a lot of even ways that it can be used that don't have anything to do with me currently. For instance, let's say you are taking a trip to the beach and you're just going out to the beach for the day, right? But you go to the beach, your drinks aren't gonna stay cold, you know they're not gonna stay cold. Taking a cooler with all the ice and everything, everything melts and it's just gross and then you get sand and it's disgusting. So having a small little fridge that you can take with you, and this does come with a shoulder strap, by the way, so that you can just throw it over your shoulder and carry it, having this little fridge would really come in handy. How about if you're an over the road truck driver? Uh, I've been an over-the-road truck driver for a long time. It's not what I'm doing at the moment, but I do still hold a CDL, so I feel your pain, guys, out there. When you go to Deloves and you go to the Pilot and you can see, all, like, you go into their, like, Walmart section where they've got everything up on there, there's a thousand of these Coleman-style coolers that are electric coolers. They're not refrigerators. They don't have a compressor, but they've got some little thing that when you apply electricity to it, it makes it a little bit cold, and there's a fan that blows this way and a fan that blows that way. It's magic. I don't know how it works, but they lower the temperature in there by something like 20 degrees, if I remember right, or 25 degrees from ambient. So if you're driving down the road and you've got your air conditioning on and you've got it at, you know, 65, 70 degrees inside the cab, well, now it's going to be 35, 40 degrees or something like that in that cooler. But those coolers, which by the way are like 200 bucks, they're not cheap, they don't have a thermostat. So you can't say, well, I want to keep it here and it only cools it. Nah, it just, it just runs full gaggle all the time, does everything that it can do, does all of the cooling that it can put together all the time. It's just on or off. So for that same 200 bucks, you can buy yourself an actual refrigerator that has a thermostat and you can set this to whatever temperature you want. So let's say you want to keep your drinks right there by your, your seat, you're driving down the road and you like your you know, some people like their water a little bit warmer. So let's say you want it at 45 or 47 degrees, or if you like a real cold and you want it at like 35 degrees, so it doesn't quite freeze, but it's nice and ripping cold. Or let's just say that you have an affinity for ice cream and you want to keep a whole bunch of ice creams available at all times. This will also run as a freezer. So you can run it down to like zero degrees, keep your ice creams nice and cold or your pops or whatever it is that you want to do. This refrigerator will do it for you. Another idea I had for this if you've already got a big cooler and you don't want a little cooler, right? Like, I don't know. Well, if you're one of those guys that really loves to have ice in your drink, you go out to the campsite and whether you're drinking sodas or trail sodas or whatever it is you're drinking, if you like to have fresh ice with you, you can have this little guy tucked away just about anywhere in here, run it on freezer, fill it up with ice, and then when you get to camp, you've got a whole cooler full of ice that's not gonna melt, right? Because it's running as a freezer and it will keep everything cold. So if you wanna take it with for ice, or maybe you put your sandwiches in here and you put your drinks in another fridge, or I mean, there's a million different things you can do with this. And the fact that it is a smaller fridge, I think leans to a lot of advantages. I mean, obviously there's the disadvantage that if you and your whole family are trying to go camping for a whole week, this ain't gonna do it, right? You're just, it's not gonna work. But if you're using it as an accessory fridge, or if you're only going out like next weekend, I'm going out to an event that is in Tennessee and it's just gonna be me. Marla's not coming with, I'm going for two nights. And so I'm taking this little guy. There's no reason to take the great big fridge. I don't need that much room because it's just me. So nice to be able to have this little guy when this is kind of all the room that I have to pack all of my equipment, everything that I'm bringing with me. There's not a ton of room in here. So having a smaller fridge will really come in handy. So I think this is gonna be awesome. We actually took this with us a couple weeks ago. We took a trip up to Cincinnati. It wasn't in Janky, it was in Marla's Lexus, but we were able to throw this guy in the back seat 
Again, took up very little room. It's, she's got a cigarette lighter plug in the back. We plugged it in, it stayed nice. And then we had cold drinks for the whole ride all the way up there. And you can always stop at the store, but it's nice to be able to say, hey honey, can you just grab me a quick soda and a drink and everybody's good. Now we don't have to stop. You're making time. We went up there for the WEBN fireworks and we're having a party at a friend's house. And I also took this guy and I had all of our drinks in here. And we have an EcoFlow River Pro, which is a 726 watt hour portable power station, battery, whatever you want to call it. And I set this thing out on the lawn with us. We were underneath a little bit of a canopy, so I wouldn't exactly say it was in the sun, but it was still like 90 degrees out there that day. And that thing sat out there keeping our drinks cold all day and all night and the following day just to see how well it would run. When I put it back in the car to drive home, I didn't actually plug it into the car. I just left it plugged into the EcoFlow so I could kind of judge battery level and running the thing outside and then in the back of a hot car or whatever for about 36 hours, it knocked that down by about half. So it went through something like 360 watt hours in 36 watt hours. So it's averaging about 10 watts per hour. Makes it easy to do the math on, well, I've got this big a battery and if it's 10 watts per hour, this is, well, your mileage may vary on exactly what you put in here or how hot it is outside or, or how cold you're keeping things, obviously, if you're running it as a freezer, it's gonna use a lot more power. But as a refrigerator, and I wanna say I had it set at like 36 degrees, it was going about 10 watts per hour, and that's awesome. That little EcoFlow, which by today's standards is fairly small. Three years ago when we bought it, you're like, yeah, this is the good one. Now there's 80 billion watt hour, whatever they are. I actually just installed into Janky 150 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery which is around 1900 or 2000 watt hours. So on that, it's gonna run this for 190 or 200. I mean, that's that's five days, right? So I'd be able to take this, let's say if I was going, I mean, I'm not gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to put enough stuff in here to feed me for five days, but the battery that's in Janky now run this thing for five days. This thing draws very little electricity. It tends to be very useful. So let's go over some of the features and some of the things that this comes with. Comes with a couple of things I haven't seen before that are fairly interesting. So it actually comes with both of the electric charging cables. So you get the 110 volt charger that plugs into your wall at the house, or if you've got, you know, like in Janky, I've got a little inverter built into the truck, which even at its 100 amp setting, because you can do 100 amp or 400 amp, everybody with a Toyota knows this, even a 100 amp setting, you could use it to power this, right? If you didn't have this other setup like I've got in there. Previous versions of Set Power and Iceco and all of the, the different refrigerators would come with just the one cord that would plug into the fridge that had the 12 volt cigarette lighter outlet. And then you had an adapter pack like this that instead of plugging directly into the fridge, it had like the little cigarette lighter thing and you plug the one into the other and then the cord ended up at 900 feet long. I think this is a much better way to go where you actually get a separate cord for the 110 and for the 12 volt. And speaking of the 12 volt, the one thing that is fairly noteworthy about this is this does come with a new style plug. Uh, the old plug, which had like a little red cap on the end of it, I've got one floating around in the garage here somewhere, but I hate them. They don't work very well. They don't hold in like the little cigarette lighter thing. They like to fall out. There's this little like red kickstand on the side of it that I never figured out what that's for. It's just got a little thing that comes. They weren't very good. This is a new version. It's got four terminals on the side that all have spring pressure that help hold that into the socket. It stays in a whole bunch better. It's got a much better feel to it. Good on set power for knowing that the old version of this wasn't very good and they brought us a new one. The cord length is something like 10 foot. I don't know exactly how long it is, but it's certainly long enough to put it in the front of the vehicle or in the back of the vehicle and you can plug this in wherever it needs to plug in. And speaking of plugging this in, I'm gonna go ahead and plug the fridge in, get it plugged into the truck so we can get that up and running and get it cooling off to show you that in a second. All right, so next up on the list and the first one that is, like I said, it's a little bit of an oddity. I think it's a, an odd inclusion, but it's still kind of cool, is they include this little ice maker packet thing here. You can see it's got like these little bubbles in here. After you unscrew the top, pull that out, the sides actually pop out. So the way you do this is you have the sides pushed in like this, you fill the thing up with water, you throw it in the freezer, and it actually makes these little like perfectly spherical ice cubes. And I don't know if they last longer, I don't, I don't know, I'm not exactly sure what the benefit is to them, but they look cool, right? And then you put this little cap back on here, and then you can carry this with you. I've actually been using this at the house. Like I'll make these little spheres and I put them in my drink and like, I don't know, it's kind of neat that they're little round things. 
The only thing I found that's a little difficult about this or odd, whatever, is once it's frozen, once all the ice is in there, it's really hard to like pull these things apart. And so you kind of have to run it underneath a little bit of water to, you know, almost like melt the very outside edge of everything that's in there. And once you do that, you can open it up and then you rah, 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 you shake the ice out of it. So again, I think this is, when I say odd, I think really what I'm saying is, is unexpected, but I think it's kind of cool. And they throw it in, so why not? So the last thing that it comes with is this little plastic, I don't know, bar or wedge or whatever you want to call it. This is actually designed so it slides in underneath the cooler and kind of locks into the bottom side of the cooler. And that helps keep the cooler from tipping over. And it will also, if you have it down in between a couple of seats, you can slide this underneath. This will lock in between the seats, stopping it from sliding forward backwards. I haven't seen one of these before with any fridge but it's kind of interesting, probably because you can see the form factor on this is actually fairly narrow. Uh, so it would be a little bit easier to tip over. But like I say, you just take this little guy and it slides in right underneath the thing there, locks in place, and that will help stop the refrigerator from falling over or having any kind of problems. And then the last piece it comes with here is this shoulder strap, which I haven't actually put to use yet. You can see it's got these little like clips at the end, so you could clip it around. The strap holders on the refrigerator itself are actually wide and fairly thin. So I think you actually take this and like run it through the little loop and then you would clip it to itself. If I'm honest, I haven't really taken a look at how to use the shoulder strap because I haven't needed the shoulder strap. I'm not really a shoulder strap guy. I don't like putting things over my shoulder and walking around with them. I'll just carry them with my hand or throw them underneath an arm or something like that. But you can totally throw it over your shoulder if that's what you like to do. And it's quiet. I've got a fairly sensitive microphone up on top of the camera here. You can hear me just fine. And the whole time I was showing you all these accessories, that's been running and hasn't been interrupting us at all. It's very quiet. There was maybe twice on the way to Cincinnati, which was about an eight hour drive from here, that I heard something. I was like, what? Oh, okay, that's the fridge. But it was just the slightest little noise. With our larger fridges that have larger compressors in them, we hear those things turn on all the time and they're not objectionable. I mean, it's just a little bit of noise but this one is probably the quietest one I've ever heard. And that's kind of always an advantage. Like let's say you've got this in the tent with you at night, something like that, and you've got it running. It's not loud. It's not gonna disturb you or anybody else. And that's about all there is to say about that. There's no disadvantage to it being quiet. Can you hear it? It's running. Can you hear it? <laughs> it's running. So anyway, taking a look inside the fridge. Uh, so this refrigerator opens up I don't know how you want to call this long ways. I would call opening the other way sideways. This is the way it opens up. So if you have to be very specific about where you put this in your vehicle, you do kind of want to make sure that as that door opens, you can get to things and it's not blocking your way. I know that in Janky, typically we don't do refrigerators that open this way because where we put them, a standard size fridge, one of your bigger fridges, that ends up being so tall because the cabinet is so tall and then the door is so tall that it hits the roof and we can't leave it open and it's a real pain. With this one being smaller, it's not that big a deal. It really kind of fits anywhere. I don't think it's as big a deal as the larger fridges. So you can see down inside the fridge, you can see it's got the two different compartments which are only controlled by one temperature, right? But this front plastic compartment runs a few degrees warmer because it's not being directly chilled. You can see that the aluminum inside of here is where the heat is actually transferred from, where the heat is absorbed and it makes everything cold. So this compartment is gonna run a little bit cooler than the front compartment. Uh, it's not gonna run 20 degrees cooler, it's nothing crazy like that. But we did keep all of our drinks over here and then we kept a couple of things over here that we wanted to stay cool but didn't necessarily have to be as cold. Incidentally, we also had a lot more luck keeping our drinks in here laid down instead of stood up when they were standing up, they just loved to fall over. Something about the size and shape of this, it really worked out well to lay everything down in there. So there's just a little tip for you. And then you can see there's a little chart on the side over here that kind of gives recommended temperatures for if you have meats or if you have drinks, if you have this or that, whatever, run it at this temperature, makes it kind of foolproof, real easy to do. Now from this angle, we'll just kind of take a look at the display that we've got going on here. And one of the things this does, you see it's got this little lock button on it over here, is it will auto lock at whatever temperature you want it at. So if you accidentally bump this thing, you see it gives you that little symbol there that says, hey, I'm locked, you can't change anything. And you have to hold this down and you can see it unlocks it there so that you can then change 
the temperature to be whatever you want it to be. You just kind of move the numbers there, set it up. We'd have to turn the power off to kind of change the setting, but this has battery protection settings of low, medium, and high that you set by running the buttons here. You turn it off and then you hold the buttons down together and it will give you a battery protection level and you can set that to be where you want to make sure that you don't kill the battery in the truck. Here again, you can see this is the little loop that holds the shoulder strap. So when you're carrying it around, it's nice and secure. And I'll just kind of give you a slightly different view here from the top. You can see the two different compartments. You can kind of see how deep it is there. So there it is, the Set Power AB16, their newest offering in their smaller portable line of fridges, meant for taking out anywhere you want to go, camping, the beach, wherever. I even think if you threw this in your trunk and just kept it in your trunk, so if you're out driving around one day, you got to go to the grocery store, but then you have to stop somewhere else and you want to throw the groceries into a fridge to keep them cold or keep the ice cream frozen, whatever, it cools down very fast. So having this just kind of as an accessory in your trunk, it takes up a little bit of trunk space and maybe you don't have the trunk space to spare, but I don't think that's a horrible idea either. Anyway, other than the fact that it's nice and quiet, it works very well, it seems to be very good quality, I like the fit, the finish, it's lightweight, it does have a, a plastic shell on it, so it's not gonna be bouncing around and breaking everything else that's inside of your trunk. So far, other than the fact that I can't take myself and Marla out camping for like a week off of what you can put into it, I like everything about it. I believe this is going to serve me very well for the years to come. And if something happens, these do come with a three year warranty and a no questions asked return policy. So if you get it and you don't like it, you can send it back. So go on Set Power's website. I'll leave a link below or go on to Amazon. I'll also leave a link there. Take a look at the different options. If this is the right one for you, I highly recommend you grab one. At the time I'm recording this, it's being offered up for $199, which I think at 200 bucks, I mean, Bugs. At 200 bucks, like you can't get a Yeti cooler for that, right? So $200, you can have yourself an actual refrigerator with an actual compressor in it that plugs into the house or it plugs into the car. Bugs. Does everything you want to do. Did you hear it? It just turned on. Did, could you hear it? I don't know if you can hear that. It's really quiet. So I'll leave the information down below. If you have any kind of questions about it, absolutely feel free to reach out to me. Ask me, I will answer whatever questions I can. And again, I'm taking this with me next weekend. So make sure you're subscribed so that you can see that trip that I go on and you'll see how well this does on a two night camping trip for just me. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Set Power for sending this out to me and allowing me to kind of test it out and really honestly change my opinion of, bugs. really honestly change my opinion of small fridges. I was never interested, I got no use for it. But now that I have one, I started thinking, well, how could I use this differently than my larger fridges? I'm pretty happy to have it. And I think this would make a great addition to your kit and it's priced affordably so anybody can have one. So thank you, Set Power. Thank you for watching. I hope this was informative. I hope you got a little something out of this and we'll see you on the next one.